Yep, definitely take a look at that. Um, tonight, instead of uh, doing that class that had one registrant, I thought, well, what might they be interested in? And I looked in the fridge, and I realized it's time to buy groceries. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, I needed some ingredients for a special, uh, a very special um, new, I don't know, it's not really a sorbet, but it's kind of like a sorbet. I've been promising it for a while that can two and three X your weight loss. You have to be in my vault group to get that. That was pretty cool. We come up with that on the fly today. Can y'all see what this is here? That's not a bug. If you're doing collagen boost, Brenda, you're familiar with that. <laughs> it gets caked on the side of the cup. But uh, let me get all my collagen out. <laughs> We, uh, we've got folks in the members only group. We're going about 60 strong now in here. So this is an impromptu. If you're new here, please check out the class schedule in the website. That's the official class times. Then I do a lot of impromptus as well. Uh, and I will continue to do those. We'll be putting out a new schedule every week, barring some shock and surprise. We will be putting out a new schedule every week. Uh, I have, I'm pretty sure, secured other employment. So um, I'm doing that third shift because this comes first to me. Uh, it always has and it always will until God calls me home. So pay attention to that class schedule where it used to I was able to do static. Then it, it may not be as static. It may revolve. And that might be good because... Anytime that I do classes um, where it's the same day, same time, you would think that would lend itself to more attendance, but it actually doesn't. It's uh, it, it tends to trend downward. People get used to it, but kind of mixing it up. Uh, I'll try to do a good job with the topics so that you know the topics before the, the following week. Right now, there's a lot of focus on the 10-day detox and the 24-day jumpstart. Um, to, earlier today... I did a jack attack. I did a little bit of a jack attack. <laughs> and y'all kill me. Y'all really do. I promise I'm going to get to the grocery tour. But I bet I got close to 10 emails that said, please do more of that. <laughs> if y'all only knew how much trouble that gets me in. <laughs> Lately, it's been called abuse. So I, I think that we're living in such a, and you can kind of see that in the political world, can't you? It's like there is no middle ground anymore. So I did a jack attack. So there were several of them saying, please bring the passion back. Um, I, <laughs> this is a weird time for me. So when I bring the passion, people tell me to stop. <laughs> and when I stop, people say bring the passion back. So uh, I might have to start labeling the classes even Jack Attack versus non to keep myself out of trouble. But just want to reassure you that my commitment to you has never been higher. It just may look different in how we deliver it. So this gets me back to the basics. I started the program many years ago with brick and mortar grocery tours. I've shared that story many times. Posey and Shelby Jean Piles, God rest their souls. They're in heaven now, uh, but a deacon and a deacon's wife that asked their little young pastor to take them to the Kroger in Rome and teach them how to eat. And uh, they all they both wore hearing aids. And uh, as I was taking them through the grocery store, Posey kept going, I can't hear you. <laughs> and uh, so I started preaching like he was used to. The next thing I know, there's like 10 people following us around the grocery store. I'm holding things up, how to combine them, talking about them. Posey could hear me. And uh, here come the manager and said, we don't allow preaching in here. And the crowd said, he's not preaching. He's teaching us nutrition and selling your stuff for you. And the manager went, oh, okay. So I finished that grocery tour up. I looked like Big Elvis sweating. I was pouring drenched in sweat. And they said, well, you come back next Saturday. And I said, and at this time, I'd only taught the program on a whiteboard inside of a pro performance. 
Uh, and I said, yeah. So for three years, every Saturday, with very few exceptions, I showed up at the grocery store. There was one time we had over 100 people that showed up at the grocery store on a Saturday morning. My, my, how things have changed. We had to divide them up into three groups. And then the manager said, you can't do that anymore. Uh, you're going to have to monitor the size of the group. That's a liability issue. True stories. So I've done grocery tours all over Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, uh, and uh, I loved doing those. Has anybody ever been in one? One of the grocery tours? Good times. Y'all are used to me doing a virtual grocery tour with a PowerPoint. I do not know how this is going to go, but I'm just going to do what I do here at the house all the time, and that's order my groceries. Uh, I'm going to order my groceries from Food City. We're going to talk about groceries. It won't be a full tour. I'll tell you what I'm getting, why I'm getting it, and it may spurn an idea. It may spurn a question. So basically, you're for fun tonight, you're going to the grocery store with me. This line of thinking is how I've lost more than 100 pounds, 132 to be exact, and come off all prescription medications. Uh, this changed my life, just knowing what to buy, why to buy it, how to pair it with other foods. Feel free to pause and let's do a really laid back fun session uh, and ask questions may, may be a help to you. As well, don't forget, this is not a diet. This is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. The challenges we do, they're a part of the lifestyle, but they're diets. Yes. The lifestyle is where it's at. And we all look for shiny new objects, something new to do. We like new. And if I, I, love, you. I love you, I hope this won't be offensive to you, but it's really, I believe, a, a type of void we're living with that we've got to have something new all the time. Um, I really um, sought my own purpose for many years. And in the little field back here uh, where sin found me and I had to deal with sin, uh, God said, it's time for you to stop worrying about your purpose. <laughs> and it's time for you to worry about who I am. I'm the Lord, your God. And uh, only me should you serve. Only me should you seek. And uh, I was looking for me when I should have been looking for God. And I think that's a lot of it. We we look for purpose. We look for some some meaning when God God is meaning. God created us to fellowship with God, and we're living with so many voids. It's hard to keep people uh, focused on a, one program at a time. Um, there's so many programs, and every day people ask me, have I heard of this program or that program? And uh, it's like, yeah, I've heard of it or I haven't heard of it, but none of it's going to work if you quit it as soon as the scales reach a plateau. Talked to somebody today, and they gained a pound in the last two days and did everything right. We address that in class, don't we? We address that in class. But you can't run away every time you hit a plateau. It's just about to get good, but you got to see it through. Has anybody ever seen that little meme where there's two guys in the cartoon? There's one guy digging a tunnel and another guy digging a tunnel. And it's he's about both of them are about to break into the light of day. They're about to get through the tunnel all the way through and come out the other side into the light. And one of them quits because he doesn't know he's right there close to the light, throws his pickaxe down, and the other one, he's still digging and almost there. You can't quit. You can't give up. With weight loss and wellness, when you feel that you're, it's not working, if you're doing everything right, not talking about somebody not working the, the plan, but about the time you think that you should give up on it, that's when those scales drop. Has anybody seen that through where you, you had a couple of days where you really worked at it hard, and the, the scales weren't moving, then all of a sudden you drop three. Does that happen to anybody? That's how weight loss comes off the body, body y'all. If we're looking at your weight chart on a, on a graph, uh, you're going to look like an unprofitable company on Wall Street, up and down, up and down, but trending down. Uh, 
It's never a straight line down. So if we'll just stick to the principles that we teach, faith, good nutrition, which what I mean by that is calorie management and insulin control. We uh, in Faithfully Fit, we tackle blue zone diets. Did anybody enjoy those? Not talking about the enjoy that, score, that class. We're not talking about red column, yellow column, blue column. Joy Beth knows what I'm talking about. We talked about blue zones over the world and Faithfully Fit today. And what they all had in common, you're going to see this after the four lessons, they all have this in common. Even though all the foods wouldn't, they didn't have in common, they had this in common, insulin control. If you're not controlling growth hormone, <clears throat> it doesn't matter <clears throat> what you're eating, it's going to be a problem. So we're learning that it's about calorie management and it's about insulin control. It doesn't matter if you're doing Jenny Craig, Nutrisystem, R3, this program, keto, it's about calorie control and insulin. Now, how can we do that in a real way, a practical, sustainable way? We talk a lot around here about meal replacements. That, that's what people associate with dieting. But can we lose all the weight we want with just our local grocery store with Shibola's principles? Yes. How does that strike you? Now, stay with me for a minute. I don't know what I'm digging at here. But um, I've been talking to other coaches today of other <clears throat> uh, and I want, want you to think about this. What are we missing that we feel like we need some sort of pill, potion, or gimmick to lose weight when we all know <clears throat> our heart, most of our life is spent at the Kroger, the Food City, as it relates to food, uh, the, the Winn-Dixie, the, the Ingalls, the Publix, all that we need is inside that grocery store, coupled with our knowledge, that's all we need to lose weight and the discipline. That might be, <clears throat> but I want you to think about that tonight as we go through the grocery store. What is it that you lack? Sandra, I believe it was Sandra today in class. She said, but I'm confused about what to eat. And, and we just talked about it. We simplified it. So if we're going to try to lose weight, is it too much to ask to only eat three times a day if we really want to lose weight? No. Is it too much to ask if you're faith-based, if you're Christ-centered, if you're a Christian? Christians wasn't mentioned in the Bible, but Christ was. The anointing, the anointed ones, the way. Did you know that's what they call Christians before they were called Christians? They were called those that are in the way. How about that? How many of you want to be in the way tonight? <laughs> so if you're in the way tonight, he is the way, isn't he? So if you're in the way, is it too much to ask to eat breakfast for the Father, lunch for the Son, and dinner for the Holy Spirit? No. And then once we know what to eat in those sessions, it's over. All you have to do is duplicate the success pattern over and over. And you know what I do? I buy my food from three or four places. I buy my food from Amazon. I hate going shopping, y'all. I hate it. <clears throat> I go, I, uh, I buy from Amazon. I buy from the Shibby Shop while there was a Shibby Shop. I buy from Advocare. I buy from the wellness company. I buy from a local grocery store. Once you know how to navigate those places, it's over. Now, I do buy my meat from Laura's Lean and you know, I do buy a few things online where I can get better quality of meats. Uh, but once you know, here's where I shop. I don't know that we shouldn't have a course here where we all just list where we shop. Now, we can't list every I asked my doctor that did my procedure how long I needed to put that medicine on there, but she hadn't taken it. Um, we might need to start a session. Let's just start there. Where do you shop? And we can, if depending on how the night goes... We might do that. We might tackle one of these grocery stores virtually at a time. But I do Food City because I hate to drive to the grocery store and they deliver out here. So I'm going to pull that up. Drives my mom crazy that I do this, y'all. Absolutely drives her crazy. I love you, mama. Uh, it drives her crazy. She's like, why are you paying that $3.99 fee? 
I like, mom, it costs more in gas to go and in time. But anyway, just different philosophy, different uh, age range. She's probably right. But here's Food City, okay? So I'm just going to talk about what I do. Feel free to unmute and ask questions, okay? So the first thing, I need some more sparkling ice. <laughs> says likely out of stock. But uh, I'm going to go on and get those. And I'm going to get six of those for myself. The reason I get these, they're carbonated. Carbonation isn't the greatest thing for you. Uh, it leaches calcium from the bones. It can upset your digestive system. But I like it because instead of drinking as many Diet Cokes, I still get some uh, sparkle. And I like to mix certain things in it, like the Collagen Boost and the Mella Out. Uh, I'll usually get the, the pineapple uh, or um, the uh, strawberry, kiwi strawberry. So I got me some of those, okay? Then we're going to take a look at my Halo Top. So I'm going to be making some special, uh, I call it, it's not really a sorbet. Sorbets are kind of icy, but it's kind of like a sorbet that helps me lose weight, helps me control appetite. Uh, I've got a recipe that I've been using where I use the strawberry halo top uh, along with the ingredients, add a little water and a little ice and I blend it up. And when I'm doing my fasting, uh, it gives me immense appetite control and it speeds up fat loss by two to three times. That's clinically proven. I'll be talking about that in the vault, but let's say that you don't want to use it that way. This is a uh, strawberry. Let me get me a, I'm going to add two of those. I might have to come back just for speed and try to get the numbers right. But a, a Halo Top, so let's pause there. Halo Top's a great void replacement. All of the Halo Tops will work, but you have to be careful because some are higher in calories like this chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream. There's a couple, like three servings in there. So a third of the cup. And one of the tricks that I do when I'm craving ice cream, uh, I will take um, a baby spoon and eat my ice cream because it seems to go a lot further that way. And I will really, used to, I just gobble ice cream up. Now I tell myself I'm savoring it. This is a great eating episode. It's a snack episode. Another thing I'll do, one of the finest protein powders that you can get is hemp protein. So if you've got a good quality hemp protein, it doesn't taste real good, but I can take Halo Top and hemp protein, as long as my protein's greater than the carbohydrate, mixed with water and ice, and it makes for an excellent protein shake. A great little meal replacement shake. It's, it's, it's a treat, if you will. So I, I really like Halo Top as an ice cream board replacement. It's, it's a little carby, so you gotta watch your overall portion. There's also some great um, wow challenges with Halo Top ice cream, where you can have some fun, like if you're in an ice cream mood, but this is a good one. Now, Arctic Zero is much better for our weight loss program than Halo Top, but I don't like it as good. Where I will use Arctic Zero is when I'm trying to add a little extra flavor to a protein shake. So I might add it like a condiment to a protein shake. Uh, does that make sense about Halo Top? And if you will, unmute and tell us your favorite flavor. I like the salted caramel. I'm going to get me one of those. And I'm going to get me my peanut butter one over here. Strawberries, mine. Strawberries, awesome, isn't it? And look at all these that they've got. They've got a lot, uh, a, a, a lot of them. I don't like the birthday cake, though. I've tried it. But yeah, strawberries a good one. Lots that you can do with it. Uh, any questions or comments about Halo Top or other ice cream void replacements? Speaking of that, I need some more briars. So I'm going to briars. Perfect. Okay, so I mentioned earlier on Facebook that these little bars, these almond bars, are one of my favorite snacks. So I'm going to add that to my cart. I love those. Now, let, let me pause and just talk about how my philosophies have changed over the years. When we started, I could have three eating episodes, three meals, and a snack, 
and still lose weight. And keep in mind, I was over 300 pounds. I wish I'd never gotten in that habit. Now I have three eating episodes. So if I'm not really hungry for lunch, I might just have one of those Briar's uh, Carb Smart bars, fudge bar or that bar, and that'll be my eating episode. That may not sound like a lot, but when do most of us eat most of our calories? We're busy during the day. It's easy to keep food off of our mind. So I can do that and call it a lunch and then have a nice dinner. Also, another thing that you can do if you like dessert after dinner, I do this a lot. I'll skip breakfast. I'll have my first eating episode at lunch, keep it kind of uh, kind of tight. And then for dinner, I'll come along, have, say, Travis's spaghetti, uh, have uh, something else approved. Maybe uh, I'm having fish and uh, uh, green beans. So I, I have that. And then for dessert, I'll have one of those bars or some Carb Smart ice cream or some Halo Top so that I get dessert. That's still three eating episodes only and you feel like you had a really big dinner with a dessert, but you still had three approved eating episodes that control insulin and blood sugar. Am I making sense? Now, what happens at late in the evening if I can't control my cravings? Well, then I can have my approved popcorn, but I'm at four eating episodes. You see where I'm going with that? So that slows things down the closer you get to go. You can still have that fourth eating episode but I like to talk to myself in terms of I have three for optimal results. Doesn't matter what three. If I'm munching on it, if I have to use my teeth, uh, if I have to use my teeth or it's a protein shake, then that's an eating episode. If you'll discipline yourself this way, you will lose weight so fast. It'll blow your mind. If you'll discipline yourself when I eat, that's an eating episode, and then I stop, and I don't eat again until it's time. Three for optimization. Four if we have a moment of mental weakness. Any questions about that? And, and do share. This is a fun, open session. What else you like? Uh, obviously, I'm getting me some vanilla. That's a good base uh, sometimes in these, these GC control shakes. For extra flavor, I'll throw me in about a quarter cup of my favorite Carb Smart ice cream. That gives it a more thick, frothy flavor. And it, as long as you keep your overall calories with your protein shakes at between 250 and 300, you're good for a meal. Whether you're using GC Control, whether you're using Beverly UMP, doesn't matter. When, with a shake, when you go over 300 calories, you'll see a slowdown because that shake is pre-digested. With your real food, you can get up to 400, sometimes depending on your, your current BMI, even up to 500 calories. But when you're having a shake, you need to keep those calories below 300. If it's below 200, it's only a snack episode. Any questions about any of that? You can have the Carb Smart. You can have the No Sugar Added. The Carb Smart's a little better for weight loss than the No Sugar Added. Uh, you want to stay away from the real ones. But I can't tell that much of a difference in the taste. What I'm after is what I'm craving. I'm craving something sweet. So it doesn't matter what it is, but I'm craving something sweet. What is the applicable void replacement for that? Whether it's a Snickers bar, whether it's a Reese's, what is the void replacement? Because if I can get the taste without the insulin spike, I'm good. Shibboleth has mental philosophies. We're either eating what tastes good and gaining weight, or we're eating what tastes good and losing weight. Which do you want? It really is that simple. If I'm craving Oreos, I have an Oreo replacement. If I want to sit in there and duck my uh, cookies in milk, I'm just using Kroger Carb Master milk, fat-free Fairlife milk, and my Lenny and Larry uh, cookies that are like Oreo cookies. They're just much more filling you won't want as many. You won't eat as many because you're not spiking insulin. Any comments? If we start eating and like said, we get busy, do we need to like just not eat or just, like, should we like have like a certain amount of time that you eat it, like 30 minutes or something? Um, can you rephrase that just so I understand? Sorry. 
Yeah, so if, like, say if I'm, I'm at dinner or I'm eating dinner and I'm at work and I have to stop eating because I get busy, do yeah. I just need to, is it better to stop eating or finish it later? Oh, you can finish it later. Is you? I mean, we you you know we're trying to stay away from grazing, but we also are we we also are practical, right? So that happens to me all the time. The only problem, and I hate to sound technical, let's say that you're having a blue column meal where you're having fit. Let's say that you're having um, hamburger steak patty, lean hamburger steak patty, green beans, and corn. So like if you ate the hamburger steak patty and the green beans and then come back later and eat the corn 30 minutes later, that might be a problem. Do you see why? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's the only time that's really a problem. When you're talking about things that are packaged already with, with all the macros, you're eating all that at the same time. But when you have a combination of food, like you don't, like if I'm at a cookout, and I'm having an approved hot dog and they got watermelon there, right? So I'm having the hot dog. I need to eat that watermelon within 50, within 30 minutes of eating that hot dog so that it's all digesting together and I can control the blood sugar elevation. Because if I wait an hour or two and then eat the watermelon by itself, unless I'm in maintenance and then that's allowed, if I'm trying to lose weight, that can present a problem. That makes sense. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? So I got me some ice cream. I think I'm pretty settled now. There's a lot of other ice creams that you can have. Uh, these little ice cream sandwiches, There, it's not them that's approved. There's so many somewhere. I bet y'all would want to know those, but I'm not seeing them. There's some little minis. I filmed those not long ago for y'all at the Ingalls. We'll have to look in the library for those. But anyway, that's my ice cream. We're done with the ice cream. All right. Then I've got to get me some vegetables. <laughs> so I need some squash. So uh, squash is one of my favorite foods. They're one of the best for weight loss. They're very nutrient dense. And here's another fun fact about squash. If you already are dealing with autoimmune issues, Squash is low in, it's one of the plant foods that's low in toxicity. If you pay attention to lion and shark days, you'll notice that squash is allowed because they're so low, to low toxins. So if you're engaging in a food elimination program, squash is one of the few vegetables that you're probably, most people are pretty safe uh, with. So I'm going to get me some yellow squash. Uh, what is best? Canned? Fresh or frozen? Well, basically, if it's organic, fresh is best. Then frozen is typically better than canned, but canned is allowed too. What you have to watch out with canned is more the, the canned fruit, uh, where you'll, you'll have some added sugar and syrup. You want to make sure that when you're dealing with Category 5 fruit, there's no sugar added if you're buying frozen fruit. Uh, but that's that's how we tier it. Canned is acceptable. You just won't pick up all of the micronutrition when you eat canned food. You'll pick up the macronutrition, the fiber, but you won't pick up the, the other benefits of it. There won't be any left. They won't be bioavailable. Uh, but your fresh squash, you'll get all of the rich nutrition that's in it, your fresh produce. So squash is a fantastic category too. I ate a lot of that. Used to eat a lot of spaghetti squash. This, if you can't find approved noodles where you're at, then spaghetti squash is the way to go. It's much better than any processed noodle that we talk about. So, you know, you have the, uh, the noodles go in this order, the real ones. Explore Cuisine pasta is the best for weight loss. Then you have Fiber Gourmet pasta. Then your Carbonata pasta. But when we're talking about vegetables used as our... Uh, spaghetti noodles, then uh, your, your category two vegetables are hands down better than any processed pasta that we approve of. Spaghetti squash, if that's your thing, all squash is a category two. 
Zucchini squash, yellow squash, great for weight loss. You get a lot of blood flow to the digestive system. So anytime I'm eating a lean meat and I want a pair of squash, I'm doing good. I need some okra. Okra is one of my favorite things to munch on. So what I'm looking for is the pick sweet. This one, this is my favorite. Now it's better if I buy it fresh, but I don't like to fool with it. And I don't like to bread it. If I wanted to buy fresh okra and bread it, I'd probably buy just plain cut okra from pick sweet. Uh, but you just take you some egg white wash. Of course, you ladies know better than I do, but you dip it in your egg white wash, roll it around in your approved batter. What type of batters are there that we can use? You've got carb quick. You've got the fiber wise all purpose flour. That's the best. You've got fiber gourmet flour. You've got almond flour, Bob's Red Mill, low carb uh, flour. They're, they're Coconut flour, these are all mesquite flour. Those are all good and approved flours that are interchangeable. But I found this one not long ago, and it tastes really close to how Mama makes it. Like it's like, tastes like regular cornmeal. I don't know if y'all tried it, but I love this stuff. It's, it's such light breading that we can control it. So with that light breading, I can even use this as an extra like if I want some of it baked and just eat it at night instead of popcorn as an extra. Now, if I go above 100 calories, I need to call it a snack, but I can also use it as a category too. That's my favorite frozen okra, this one right here. Pick sweet, air fried, lightly breaded okra. Has anyone tried that one? That one's really good. Okra is one of the most beneficial foods for our program. Now, if you've got autoimmune issues, it, okra could be causing you a problem. So you might have to go through our food elimination protocol one day to determine that. But if you don't have any autoimmune issues, it's great for weight loss. Anybody? Make sure you know the difference. The crunchy breaded okra will not work. Make sure that you're getting this from the library. It's not any breaded. See these, they're coated way too heavily. But this one is perfect. You'll love it if you try it, if you like okra. You've got these uh, pickled okras. These are freebies. This is any time that I'm having those mental cravings, I'm getting me some pickled okra. I love pickled okra. Margaret Holmes, if you like canned vegetables, I'm not, I don't love canned vegetables. I will eat them. About the only canned food I will eat is pinto beans. Uh, they can be made to taste just like you had them in a crock pot all day. But uh, I have a hard time uh, with the aftertaste of canned vegetables, but I will do it occasionally. But your cut okra, tomatoes and okra, you've got a category three in here. So if this is something you like, you got your grilled chicken breast seasoned properly, and then you got tomatoes and okra on the side. That works. I'm not buying any pickled okra today. I just needed that one. <laughs> okay. With our fruit, I always buy me some fruit. <clears throat> if you're trying to lose weight, look no further than berries. Um, those of you that are trying to eat clean, but you like your peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I do hear from a lot of our people that um, they do not uh, believe in eating uh, anything artificial like Walden Farms, calorie-free jelly spreads, uh, jams, those kind of things that are that are sugar free. It doesn't bother me, but if it bothers you, one of the things I love doing is taking fresh berries and putting those on my peanut butter sandwich. It makes for a delicious peanut butter sandwich. Uh, another thing that you can do is take the little bran crisp breads, put a little peanut butter or fat free cream cheese or even reduced fat cream cheese, even full fat cream cheese for that matter. D depending on how you watch your calories. I need to go over that, but I'll put blueberries. I'll just press blueberries all into it or strawberries. Berries are one of the best foods on the planet. They're very low glycemic. Typically all of them are high in fiber. They promote regularity. They give you energy. They're refreshing. One of my favorite breakfast, one of my favorite desserts is mixed berries with fat-free Cool Whip and hemp flakes. That's one of my favorite meals. It's very refreshing. 
Uh, I think you'll love it. Blackberries are one of the best berries for you because of the high fiber content. So berries, if you're buying frozen berries, just make sure it's no sugar added and there's nothing in that packaging but berries. You don't want sugar added. That can just send the insulin through the roof and cause you to miss out on all the efficient fat burning that you're going to have for the two days. Uh, typically, when you see a keto blend, if you see keto and it's paired with fruit, I'm not saying this won't work. I'd have to see the nutrition label. Keto, just so that y'all remember, keto means high fat. What do we not want to be eating with high fat? Fruit. <laughs> so be, just know keto means high fat. When you have the presence of high fat, you want a low presence of carbohydrate, no matter what they're saying on that package. Uh, berries can also be used as a condiment in any of your approved shakes like GC Control or Beverly UMP. Can't beat berries. Any questions about berries? I'm going to get me some strawberries while I'm here. Boy, they're expensive. Good gracious. But I love my berries. All right. Moving on. I know I'm going to get in trouble now when my mother sees this. She'll say, "Buy just buy a head of lettuce. It's cheaper, but I'm lazy. I will spend the extra on my little salad kits. So I eat a lot of salads, especially during lunchtime. Um, I'll get the salad kits. I just won't use their dressing typically. Uh, I'll use a lot of the goodies in there. Uh, and then I'll put me a little of my reduced fat cheese on it and use a homemade dressing. I like homemade Catalina dressing. That's in the recipe library, but I'm gonna go ahead and buy me a, a couple of these little kits. I'm gonna do the Mexican, it's got more lettuce in it. Um, I love this from the standpoint, with, with my lettuce, with my salads, I can have a vegan salad with three to five tablespoons of hemp hearts or hemp flakes with an approved dressing. Like light Italian, if you don't want to make your own, any of the Walden Farms, um, you can just use lemon juice. I do that a lot. I'll just squeeze lemon. Uh, but you can also take your MCT oil, apple cider vinegar, Italian seasoning. That makes for a really good fat-burning salad dressing. As long as your salad dressings meet the 5-2 and few rule, you're okay. Five grams of sugar or less, two grams of fat or less, and then just use a little bit and just mix it up well. Uh, you're talking grilled chicken here. Scal I put scallops on it. I put fish on it. So there's just so many things you can do with a salad. Those of you that uh, are, are usually asking about approved restaurants, just know that every restaurant's approved. Every restaurant's approved because they all typically all have chicken and they all have salad. So if you're really wanting to do this, you can, you can get in and out of any restaurant and just have a grilled chicken salad or some salmon in a salad. If you've got your survival kit, make sure you take your survival kit in with you so that you have your dressing with you, okay? In the deli, you'll see rotisserie chicken. You'll see these uh, imitation crab salads, things like that. Here's what you're looking for here. So if you, they usually have the nutrition profile, stay away from these. See where this says stars chicken salad? That's going to be way too heavy in fat, typically. But those that you find in the deli that you buy by the pound, any of that stuff that they have in there, as long as your protein is greater than your carbohydrate, you can have it as a meal. You can then add that to a salad. You can add it to bran crisp bread. If you're going to use a serving that's under 200 calories of even like imitation, the Neptune salad, uh, as long as you know the snack formula, you could do that. So like the imitation crab, the protein is not going to be greater than the carbohydrate, but usually it meets our snack rule. So I'm going to pause there for a minute. Does everyone know how to figure the snack rule? Anybody need to know, I should say. This applies to all of those things in the deli. In the deli the tuna salad, the chicken salad, the imitation crab, as long as you keep it under 200 calories, it can be a snack episode. 
you just have to add the right thing to it, like your salad, like your bran crisp, because I'm going to get me some of that rotisserie uh, chicken salad. All right, Denise, here's how you determine it. It's real simple to do. Uh, just make sure you do it right. So ask them for the nutritional profile. And we've got to keep a snack episode under 200 calories. Okay. Uh, that's typically where we start. Is that serving? What is the serving? Okay. Let's say it's a half a cup and it says 180 calories. We're good so far. And then we look at, is the protein greater than the net carbs times 0.30? That's how we determine a snack. So if I look at that nutrition label and let's say the protein is 12, and then I figure out my net carbs. Net carbs is your carbohydrate minus fiber and minus sugar alcohol. So let's say that it was uh, 20 grams of carbohydrate and two grams of fiber, no sugar alcohol. That would be 18 net carbs. Now this would not work as a meal if I go over 200 calories because I won't have enough protein to neutralize the carbohydrate impact. But because we're using less calories, we need less ratio. So I take 0 0.30 times 18. And the number that I get is 5.4. Is 12 greater than 5.4? It is. So then I know that that will work as a snack. Let's say that I understand, but I don't like doing the math. You can go to the website and the same calculator that the girls use to approve food for me, you can use, but if you do it wrong, you're gonna get the wrong answer. You gotta know how to do it. And it's always good for safety to put it in the group and ask, are you right? So the food calculator, so if I'm doing imitation crab meat, imitation crab, and you can put a you can turn this into an app on your phone. You can you can literally go to this on your phone in your browser, add it to your home screen so that your calculator's right there. Tell me the website isn't something worth saving. Okay. So you've got your snack. Uh, does this product have a nutrition label? If it doesn't, then we don't, there's no way we could do this. So yes, it does. What are the total calories? So let's say they're 180 calories. Let's say there was seven grams of fat. Um, there's 63 calories from fat. Nine times seven is 63. Uh, there's nine calories in a gram, but usually it'll say on the packaging. What are total carbohydrates? Let's say 20 sugar grams. Let's say they put one gram of sugar. There's no sugar alcohol. There's two grams of fiber and there's 12 grams of protein. And then we check it. And it says, your food is Shibboleth approved as a snack. You got to label it right. And it says you can have up to one serving of this food item as a snack. Then you can add any freebie to it. Lettuce, bran crisp. Does that make sense, everybody? Did you know that that was there? Y'all have been awful quiet. Are y'all... Are you having fun or is this boring the hound out of you? If I'm boring you, let me know. <laughs> I'm looking for some way to hook all y'all back, get y'all back going. All right. No, this is great stuff. Keep on going. All right. Yo, I'm afraid that my groceries, y'all ladies, are gonna get tickled because it's I'm not I'm I'm pretty uh, regimented. <laughs> I don't do a lot of different weird things. Uh, another thing I've been asked lately is like the okra. When we were looking at the okra, 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 there's the dehydrated okra. As long as you're doing dehydrated okra with the salt on it, you know, the dehydrated they have at some of the stores, you can do that if you keep your serving under 200 calories. There's a lot of added vegetable oil there. It's not the best thing for you. But for those that have asked, a big heaping handful of dehydrated okra, that's an approved snack long as you keep it under 200 calories. Let's see, there's nothing else I'm feeling here. Y'all know that pickles and cucumbers are a great freebie? Ah, just for fun, ladies, I know 
I need to save money. But I love cabbage. I usually keep boiled cabbage in the fridge. It did cause me some autoimmune issues. I found out it's high in oxalates. So I had to back away from doing it as often as I do. But uh, one of the things I love to keep in the fridge when I have the knickknacks is salted and delicious cabbage. <clears throat> I'll just buy angel hair coleslaw. I like it shred real thin and I'll throw it in my pot and I just wet it. When I rinse it off, you don't even have to add any water to it. Y'all know that probably maybe a quarter cup for the entire pot or less. And I'll just, uh, I will uh, turn, turn it on medium heat, boil it down, get it real soft, salt and pepper it. And that's a freebie. If I put ghee butter in it, it's no longer a freebie. It's just a good old solid category two. But for those of you that get the knickknacks, things like that, you're not breaking the habit of grazing, but those freebies can really help you uh, keep from, from turning your perfect day into a holiday. When, anytime you see a seasoning pack, they're usually going to be 5 to 15 calories. Think about flavoring more of your food with the different spices and seasoning packs. And that reminds me another reason of why I came here to the grocery store. I need some McCormick's. I do not buy jarred spaghetti sauce. I just, it's too high in sugar. And why do it when the sauce is a lot better using a seasoning pack? I get canned tomatoes. Canned tomato sauce is fine. I prefer canned um, diced tomatoes from Hunt's. But anyway, you could get fresh tomatoes and chop them up. But I, I have to keep my McCormick spaghetti sauce mix. And I also love the void replacement for the uh, Chili Mac at, uh, what's the restaurant called? Steak and Shake. They have Chili Mac. So a lot of times, instead of using spaghetti sauce mix, I will use chili sauce mix or chili seasoning. And I'll have that uh, a big plate of the elbow pasta with or, or regular fiber gourmet noodles. And I'll make my sauce with tomato sauce. I'll add a little uh, tomato sauce or diced tomatoes or a combination of both. Add a little water, throw this in there, one of these sauce packs, and I've either got chili mac or spaghetti. McCormick's is, uh, that's how I make my spaghetti. They've got good products. All of their seasoning packs are gonna work depending on what, you, what you're wanting. I'm gonna see if they've got my Goya in show you another couple of seasonings that I like that make things really good. Let's see if we can find them. All the Goya seasonings work, but they've got a salad seasoning. I bet they don't have it here. Oh, I got to get me some Old Bay for my seafood. I use Old Bay seasoning. Let's see, Goya salad. Let me try it that way. If you ever find that, it really seasons a salad up nice. They don't seem to have it. Sometimes they'll have the ham seasoning. I always do that with my pinto, pinto beans, Goya ham seasoning. Yeah, there it is. We used to actually sell that. Goya ham seasoning, I like that with my pintos and anything that needs that ham flavoring. That's a really good one. We also get asked a lot about fish breading. I'd rather you use one of the breadings we've already talked about. But any of these fish, fish fry breadings, any of them that you prefer to use to get more of that restaurant fried fish, it's going to bring it down on the what or bring it up on the weight loss meter so it's not as good. But any of these that's 10 grams of carbs or less, when you pair that with your fish and then count your fish as a category four instead of a one, you're going to be fine. So you can find some really good breadings to have more of that Captain D's or Long John Silver's thing going on there, as long as it's 10 grams of carbs or less, and then you batter your fish with that. So I'll take like cod, dip it in my egg white wash, roll it around in one of these uh, more robust breadings, fry my fish in MCT oil, then have my salad or my squash or my broccoli, and you've got a great meal there, butternut fries, butternut squash fries, you can actually have um, the fish and chips like you do at a restaurant with some of these breadings. Again, better to use TVP, better to use almond flour, better to use coconut flour. But if you're in a hurry and you want more of a restaurant-like fried fish, 
do something like that. Another thing you can do is take those same butternut squash fries. Now I'm getting excited. You can take those same butternut squash fries or those um, jicama, jicama, and, and you can also bread them in a little bit of that breading. And it's like going to Long John Silver's if you even like that sort of thing. I do. If I go to an Irish restaurant, uh, I, I always get the fish and chips. It's like the best, one of my favorite things. Why not do that at home? Any questions about any of that? Make sure now I'm giving you these little tips that can go wrong, they can go wrong. Because if you do the wrong thing or too much of some of the stuff that I do, then you are going to get that extra insulin increase. And if you've been coming to class, you know that insulin, it floats. Can anybody explain to me what I mean when I say, if you've been coming to class, maybe I need to start describing it that way. It floats. What do I mean by it floats? Help me out, Lady Warrior. So here, here's what happens, y'all. Watch this. When I say floats, if you start doing the wrong amount, okay, those of you that haven't been coming to class because I haven't been having many night education classes, we've been talking a lot about this. Why does this system work so good? Here's your insulin levels, one to 10. Here's your days of the week. Why does Shibboleth work for those that work it? We're controlling insulin. In order to lose body fat, we got to keep our insulin levels somewhere down here or we can't lose body fat. When we get up here, we can't lose it. And the higher we go, the harder it is to get back down here. So blood sugar, I just ate Reese's. Boom, blood sugar went way up here. Okay, now my I have to get hold of some insulin fast. Hopefully my pancreas is still operating and I haven't become desensitized to insulin. So I get I get my insulin. The insulin regulates this real fast. It brings it right back down to normalized levels so that we live. We don't die, literally. We don't go into a diabetic coma. We got our insulin. Now the insulin is up here and it starts floating around and it starts trending down. So the next day, if we don't do everything right, we just have a little too much of that fish breading. It didn't go way up here again. It's not an Oreo, but because it was floating and hanging out, we bumped it up here again. And then it starts trending down and we don't have too many calories. We even under ate on Wednesday, but we had two little Hershey kisses. It didn't go, wham, but it goes, boop. Now, do y'all see what happens with that lifestyle that we were living? We keep our growth hormones so high, inflammatories high, uh, bodies producing more bad cholesterol when if we would just live the lifestyle sorry got an uphill battle here if we just leave live the lifestyle what happens when i have a holiday now i have perfect days here's what happens goes back down here now we can live down here again it's just those little nuances. Listen, little foxes spoil the vines. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I wish that were cold or hot, but thou were lukewarm. Do y'all see? Do you see? Do you see? Follow the philosophies of the program and it will work for you. Any comments or questions on any of this so far? I'm going to wrap it up quick. Because y'all know if y'all been buying groceries, you have to take out a personal loan to buy groceries these days. So it's not like I can buy many. Anybody? Sauerkraut is exceptional. Sauerkraut is a freebie. Uh, every time my mom and dad go up to Amish country, they bring me back some sauerkraut. I love that the best. It reminds me of my mom's. Nothing but kraut, water, and salt. That's the way I like it. Great for kraut and weenies. Ah, y'all made me want some kraut and weenies. I'm out of weenies. So let's go do that. So there are several different types of franks that are allowed. One of my favorite meals, I still have, a, I'm traumatized it's in elementary school because they would say, Martin Farton. 
every time I would eat kraut. Martin Farton, that's what they would call me. Shoo, Travis stinks. But I love kraut. Anybody else like kraut? <laughs> I've loved it my entire life. I can eat it by itself right out of the jar. Uh, but I love to fry it up in, in medium heat with MCT oil and have kraut and weenies. Anybody like kraut and weenies? So we're going to do the 97% fat-free uh, franks. These are beef. As y'all know, there's a lot of other uh, franks, weenies. There's a lot of a lot other a uh, lot of other ones that work. These are by far the best. And when you cook them in MCT oil, you're adding back that fat flavor that's so good. So few things here, just to think about the number of meals. Let's let's do this just for fun. Let's go to Hot Dog Island. Anybody want to lose? Watch this. I'm not kidding. Does anybody want to lose 20 pounds in the next 40 days going to Hot Dog Island? I know I'm being silly, but I just want to prove points. You want to go to Hot Dog Island? It's all a mindset. I can lose weight so many ways, it's crazy. What about we do this? Y'all want to do this? It's just hitting me. It's this Holy Spirit. It really is. Who wants to do, you know how we're doing Shibola Simplified? Who wants me to do a challenge, Hot Dog Island, for three days next week? Will anybody do that? Hot Dog Island. Will somebody really do that? That's the kind of stuff I do. And then I don't want hot dogs again for a month. <laughs> so let's look at just all the ways that you can lose weight eating hot dogs. Are you ready? Here's all the ways that I, I eat hot dogs like crazy, Franks. So those Hebrew National, the others aren't as good because they have something added in much more abundance. Do you know what that is? They're approved, but they're not nearly as good. Starch. That starch in those other hot dogs, it's the starch, Lisa. Good call, though. The starch. Uh, they are not good. Uh, th th those are uh, lesser evils. But this one is such low starch, I can get away with it. Okay, One of the things I'll do for breakfast in the morning, I'll take two of those Franks. Now, I know this is simple, but every meal can't be a a feast or a, a delicacy, but I'll take two of them Franks, cut them up, and I will fry them up in MCT oil, and I'll just use a little ketchup, and that'll be a meal. There's nothing wrong with doing that. You're getting your protein. They taste pretty good. Another thing that I love to do is take the AHS pancakes in the morning, make me an AHS pancake, make it a large one, or two small ones, and I'll put the Frank in the middle, and I'll roll it up like a pig in the blanket in the morning. You can also do that same thing with sugar-free syrup, like Aunt Jemima sugar-free syrup on top of one of those in an AHS pancake. It's delicious. Has anybody tried that or thought of that? One of my favorite go-tos. Simple, effective. Can I take the Frank and have a, a, a scrambled egg with one Frank and call that a meal? Can I do that? Yeah. Can I turn it into a super, super meal in the morning with carb quick flour? Make me like a, a, a little pizza crust with the carb quick, quick flour and the fiber wise flour. Put my two francs in it and roll that up and have like a pig in the blanket and turn it into an amazing fat loss meal? Yes. What about the regular hot dog with a healthy life bun with a little approved chili and some sauerkraut and ketchup and mustard? Can I do that? What's wrong with these ideas? And we lose weight. Now, now watch. Okay, so you understand how amazing that is. If I eat a regular white bun, let me do my illustration. I know I'm probably boring, y'all. Here's why a hot dog gets excited, exciting. Typically, your hot dog 
is a white bun, okay? One white bun is equivalent to 20 teaspoons of sugar. Did y'all know that? 20 teaspoons of sugar. Goodness. Then you put a regular Frank in it. That's mostly what macronutrient is a regular Frank. So I've got my Frank. Yeah, it's like a Coke, Lisa. Sure is. All, all a cola is is like liquid bread. So you've got a white bun and you've got a Frank that's mostly fat. When I eat that white bun, remember my insulin chart? Boom. There's no sugar in it, but it has the same effect. And now we've got the fat bus, hop, hop. And the fat bus has all this fat to pick up and it's going to store it. That's its job. But if I eat it our style, a healthy life bun, for me, it's an approved tortilla. I'll take my approved tortilla, rub it around in MCT oil on both sides and crisp it up and then put my hot dog in that. It's much better for you than the bun that we use. But let's just regular hot dog bun. Now we use a healthy life bun and we get this much insulin impact. We get some, it's, it's not perfect, if we use the tortilla, we'll get this much. It's up to you. And then we're using a Frank that has almost no fat in it and no starch. So we kept our levels where we needed our levels. Does that make sense? So kraut and weenies. Uh, using the kraut on your hot dog, using a little chili on your hot dog, turn it into a pig in the blanket, having it with eggs, having it with uh, any category too. So you've got all these ideas just with hot dogs. We could go to Hot Dog Island and lose five pounds in three days just eating the right hot dog and have fun with it. Would Quest chips work with that? Okay, this is where we have to talk about manipulation of our system. Here's where it's a faithfully fit, the advanced conversation. Not that there's anything advanced about what I'm going to say. Let, let me talk to you about what Deborah's suggesting. Would Quest chips go with my hot dog? Of course, they sure would. Quest chips and double bites would go well with an approved hamburger or an approved hot dog as long as your meat is a category one lean protein. But are we slowing our weight loss efforts down? Absolutely. Unless you do it this way, Deborah. unless you do it this way. If I know for lunch I'm having a hot dog and I want chips with it, I do not have to count that as two eating episodes, but I do. I count it as a meal and a snack. Does that make sense? So I'm a little tougher on myself because I want to stick to three eating episodes. If you just have hot dog and Quest chips, it really is one meal. It's just a meal. But to be tougher on myself and to lose weight faster, if I want those chips with that hot dog, I'm counting the hot dog as a meal and the Quest chips as a snack. Make sense, everybody? It's just a little, being a little more severe with yourself because if you're trying to lose weight, you need to be. If you're in maintenance, it's no big deal. All right, I'm getting ready to wrap this up just because we've been going for an hour and I don't want to bore you to death. I could get into cereal. I could get into milk. I could get into anything. But before we go, is there something that you would like me to look at for you before I go? Fiberwise Flour is uh, from uh, the Wellness Company. I can give you that link if you'd like to get more information about it. It's a shopping club for clean foods and supplements and all kind of good stuff. I'll put it in the link for you, or I mean in the chat for you. You are a member, so that's where you get it. If anybody else wants information, just give me your information and I'll contact you.
Fiber wise flour. I use that. Yep. And Deborah, I know I still owe you recipes for Bob's Red Mill. I just hadn't had time. I'm sorry. I'll get to it though. All right. Did y'all enjoy this? Is this something you want to do with me when I go shop? Because <laughs> I do buy different stuff from time to time. But uh, I hope that helps. Um, Hope it's something you can incorporate. Think about the grocery store is full of great void replacements, full of everything that we need. I could lose weight if all I had was a dollar general. It's just knowing how to combine foods the right way. Thank you all. Don't forget about considering partnering with us. We need you. Uh, $10 a month gets you the partner section of the website. It keeps me uh, with the ability to do these live classes uh, and keep our website going. We appreciate all of our partners. Thanks, Polly. Don't forget to take your peak performance tonight, <laughs> your PM. Don't forget to take it tomorrow. If you'll be consistent with that, it will make a difference. All right, y'all. We'll just close out in prayer. I appreciate y'all tuning in tonight. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, Lord, our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power in the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank y'all. We love you in the Lord and we'll talk to you tomorrow, God willing. Bye everybody.